millimeter. It's hard to say that word, millimeter. Hello and welcome to a new Sambanits podcast. Uh, I'm Beatriz, I'm the designer behind Sambanits. And I come to you from Santiago de Chile, uh, and today is Wednesday, uh, October 21st of 2020. I tried to record Monday, but <laughs> the neighbor upstairs started um, with the power drill again. I don't know if they haven't worked on or something, but yeah. So today I haven't heard it yet, so I thought I should just jump in and start <laughs> recording uh, before they get back to being noisy with their construction uh, <laughs> things. But anyways, um, before we get into the knitting, I wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who watched my last episode. That was my first episode speaking in English. And that I felt very much welcome and very much loved. And um, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to come and spend a little while with me chatting about knitting. And yeah, so thank you so much <laughs> and I hope you guys like what I have to show you today too. <laughs> so uh, let's get started. The first thing I wanted to show you is this um, color work, um, round yoke color work sweater. It's called the Miel Sweater and it just went live uh, this Saturday. Um, it's my first time designing um, a color work sweater and it was quite fun. <laughs> I really liked it. Uh, color work has a lot of... Uh, opens up a lot of possibilities. And I, I always find it so pretty. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is um, a DK weight yarn. This uh, coral one is from a local store here in Santiago called Ilar. Um, the name of the dyer, I think, um, it's Claudia, I think something. I'm not sure. I'm gonna put it on the um, on the notes here. Uh, but this is DK weight, 100% uh, baby alpaca, um, and yeah. Um, it's quite soft and quite warm today. Um, we already, last time on last episode, I said it was still a bit chilly. It's not anymore. It's spring is coming like strong here in Santiago. And um, yeah, um, in the night, still, it's um, at night, still, it's still, how you say, uh, chilly, I think. But um, yeah, in the day it's getting quite warm, so I'm quite warm <laughs> on this alpaca, alpaca sweater. And I'm also getting a bit like um, like allergic. Mm. I have always been sort of like an allergic person when there is um, uh, too much uh, temperature and climate changing, like uh, from season stuff. But uh, in Rio, since it's so humid, I don't know, I think it's, I don't know, maybe it was huge to it there, I don't know. But here, I, I feel it more, I, I don't know if the changes are more drastic, but I feel it more. But anyways, I'm sorry, I'm not here to talk about my, my allergies, I'm here to talk about knitting, so <laughs> back to the sweater. I'm sorry. Um, so yeah, this is DK from the Ilar. Um, and it's 100% baby alpaca and this blue one is from a commercial uh, brand here from Chile called Lanabel, Lanapura uh, and blue I forgot the name, the number uh, and I name it Miel, Miel in uh, Spanish means honey because of the shapes of it that reminds me of like a honey spoon and also a beehive um, yeah um, I had lots of fun, it was quite fun designing color work. Um, I struggle a bit still uh, to get gauge uh, between like the color work section and the plain stock neck session. 
but uh, what I do is I go up one or two little sizes to try and compensate. Um, I don't know if you guys can hear, but it's like quite noisy today, the streets outside. Um, lots of buses going by and um, it's... Yeah, they, they were changing the, the bus, uh, not fleet, but like the buses from the town. Uh, to like an electric ones, but uh, they, they stopped. And with the pandemic, everything stopped, so uh, they're quite old and quite noisy. So I'm sorry if you guys can hear that. But anyways, um, yeah, and this blue one is Lana Bell. It's listed on Reverie as a sport weight yarn, but it, for me it feels like decay. Um, Cachupina just left. Um, Cachupina is our tabby cat. She used to live in Christopher's work and um, they decided she couldn't stay there anymore because she was <laughs> always getting in, uh, in the cafeteria mm -hmm. and from uh, because of like health codes um, because like a big cafeteria for all the workers and stuff so she had to go and we brought her here and it's going to be one year now that she's with us and she always likes to play with my yarn and uh, stay close to me when I'm kneading here on the couch and now she was just here and she just left to the other side of the couch and it's getting close to her lunch time so anytime now there's gonna be some meowing but anyways, uh, yeah, uh, it's a classic round yoke constructions, uh, construction from the neck down. I don't know if I said it already, uh, from the top down. And it's very, um, if it's like um, your first time uh, needing a color work sweater, it's, it's very, I, I find it easier to work top down because you can Try it on as you go, um, and uh, the back is shaped with some uh, German short rows, and that's it. It's um, I, I quite like um, like this um, uh, how to say color work style that you, you have to pay attention for this section, and then after you split for the other, it's just like plain stop net in the round for miles and. I don't know, I, I like that. So yeah, I, I like it that after you split for the uh, the arms and you finish the color work section, it's just like miles of stock net. And I really like to have at least one project that is on this uh, sort of like section or point or because <laughs> uh, then I can, I used to take it to the movies a lot and just work like stock net, plain stock net in the round or like watching TV or reading or something. Um, yeah, uh, that's it, I think. And I don't know that, what else I have to say for this sweater. Uh, yeah, I went up two little sizes for the color work, I think, to try and compensate the gauge. And yeah, it's, that's it, I think. I hope you guys like it and the pattern is, a, is available on Reverie, Lovecraft and Pay Hip. Um, so yeah, I hope you like it and I hope you uh, knit it. Because <laughs> it's uh, getting uh, colder on the northern hemisphere and it's uh, time to get all the knits out. <laughs> and here we are getting warmer. So I'm gonna actually go change to something more suitable for spring <laughs> and then I'm gonna come back. Hi again, I'm back. I just changed because I was so hot on that alpaca sweater. Um, so yeah, I had to change clothes. Uh, but anyways, um, the other project I would like to talk to you about is this one. It's um, the Jupiter Shawl. Uh, it's also a pattern from me. That this one went live on the beginning of October. Uh, it's um, how to say an asymmetric, asymmetric um, 
finger on weight shawl that it's worked from one tip to the other end and uh, I don't know if you guys can see it well um, it has uh, it calls for two uh, yarns uh, and on this section you actually stripe uh, with both you make larger stripes with yarn A and yarn B so yarn A here is a knit picks half horn um, hand hand dyed speckles I think it's the name in color a Jupiter I'm gonna uh, uh, play uh, put the, the name on the notes down here um, and the other one is this one that's a hundred percent alpaca uh, from Indiesita yes yeah, Indiesita uh, in coloring like off white uh, here they call blanco invierno something like um, winter white I, I kind of like that name in Portuguese we don't, we don't have a name we also say off white uh, but with our accent so that would sound something like off white <laughs> I don't know uh, but anyways so yeah you start from here and you work these garter stripes uh, with both yarns alternating like I don't know if you can appreciate the contrast but yeah and then there is this lace um, it's uh, actually easier than no, I think you have to start yeah it's like this um, you it's actually easier than it seems this lace is quite intuitive I think uh, and then you alternate these sections until the end it was like this was like so yeah, um, I really like some, sometimes when you're designing some patterns like they come together quite easily and some others don't and this one was one of them and I don't know they always when it, that happens it always like feels so special to me <laughs> like um, I had uh, both this yarn sitting on my stash on my stash for quite a um, more than one year I think um, yeah, and then one day I just started sketching and made some math for the um, for the lace and stuff, uh, and that's it. It came together. I started knitting and it just worked. Some <laughs> it always I don't know. I always find it quite special when this work. Um, I really like that they have quite low contrast um, and it's a very um, say lightweight shawl um, it's not small it's actually quite uh, long like I don't know I think it was like one, one meter seventy centimeters like that would be uh, I mean yes, I don't know that would be like uh, more than 60 inches I think yeah more than 60 inches for sure yeah so it's like 60 64 maybe 68 inches I think long um, and they're not that depth so uh, it's easy to fit it in your purse and carry around so if you get um, cold you have it with you and the alpaca uh, is really really warm so even though it's quite uh, thin it keeps you quite warm and yeah that's it it's super show also available on the same all my pairs are on Ravelry, Lovecraft and Bayhip and yeah I I, I love lace. Um, lately I have been like on a cable row, <laughs> but um, lace, I don't know. I, 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 there's something about the rhythm of lace that, I don't know, I just like it. Um, and it's quite, as I said, it's more intuitive than it looks. Um, it's more, um, how to say, it's easier than it looks, I think, this, this lace. So, uh, if you want to give it a try on lace, I think this would be a great project for it because it's not that, like, it's not a whole lace shop. Uh, 
and like the repeats are like five, I think like 10 stitch repeats and it's the same all around so it's quite easy to memorize and it's easier to like because they're like sort of like this pyramids, not pyramids like those angles, I don't know, <laughs> hexagons, <laughs> I don't know. Um, they are, it's easy to read, I think, in my opinion. So, and also got a stripe that is like super relaxing and perfect for TV. Um, I think I used like 200 and something yards of the Hawthorne and maybe a bit more also 200 and something yards of the um, alpaca uh, i think i use uh, i'm not sure now but it was four millimeters needle size so like a west six i think i'm not sure maybe a five west five um but yeah uh, it uh, grows quite fast and that's another thing about this uh, knitting lace when you finish the knitting this it's like it's like super much like this not like this but it's quite small and then when you block it it almost doubles inside because the lace opens up like it blooms i would say like it. if you're knitting lace you have to block it um, and yeah it, it almost I, I would say it almost doubled in size from uh, when I finish the sample before blocking. So yeah, it's the Schuchter Shawl and I hope you guys like it. <laughs> Hi again, I had to stop because uh, my camera uh, I ran out of battery so <laughs> it just stopped <laughs> recording while I was in the middle of uh, talking about this show. So I'm gonna start over. So yeah, this is uh, the Comena show. It's um, Comena. <laughs> it's the Spanish word for beehive. So uh, I guess you can see like, that I was, I don't know, thinking too much about honey lately, apparently. <laughs> so yeah, um, this is a uh, worth the wait. Uh, it's also an asymmetrical triangle shape that you start from one tip and you go increasing um, until you reach the other um, side of the um, of the triangle. And uh, it's this one is a collaboration with uh, Miss Babs. Uh, it's work on their um, big silk uh, base uh, it's uh, silk merino I don't know I don't remember now the uh, ratio between them but it's uh, silk and merino and it's super super soft uh, I have worked with this yarn before I mean a previous collaboration with them and uh, it's so soft. <laughs> uh, yeah, this colorway is the roasted pumpkin, and it has like it's uh, as I said, you start from here and you go increasing the um, like uh, the beehives, and then once you get to here, you just start uh, working like half of your row in garter stitch, and then the beehive pattern. I feel, I think it's very like fall looking. It's very cozy, like you can wear it like this. I feel like very warm and yeah. Uh, I really like this, uh, working on this. And it's a funny thing. Um, I love cables. I love like the texture they, they have. And lately I have been going through like a very um, cable moment, I would say. I have been looking a lot um, on the internet, on my books, to get inspiration for like uh, cable stitch patterns. 
and uh, for this show I tried cabling without a needle, without, without a, like how to say, a, a, cable, a cable needle, like, um, and I, I really like it, it's a technique that it's scary because for a split second you have your life stitches just like hanging loose, <laughs> but then you you get a hang of it and it really speeds up the, um, the process because when you're working cable sometimes it's like ribbon it's the adjustment might seem small but they add up and it ends up slowing you your progress and cabling without a needle it's it's very makes it uh, a lot faster um, so I, I really liked it and uh, it's not a technique that you can use on like large uh, crosses. These are all like four stitch cables, so it's like a two a two by two crossing, either uh, left leaning or right leaning. They're always um, two stitches on the front and two on the back that you're gonna cross. But and, and that makes ideal, I, in my opinion, ideal uh, to learn this technique. So. If you want to give it a try, uh, this will be going live next week, I think, maybe Monday. Uh, see, so I think it was the 26th of October, uh, the beginning of that, a Monday, latest uh, Tuesday. Uh, and I really recommend uh, trying the cable without cabling without a needle even if for any other pattern it's just like a, a technique uh, that might sp speed up your uh, how to say cabling time <laughs> uh, but yeah and got a stitch is always squishy always a pleasure I love it and you just go and it's so soft so squishy um, and then here you end up on a, a big rip that aligns with the cables. So I think I use a 5.5 uh, millimeter, it's hard to say that word, millimeter uh, needle, so it would be I think a 9 for US. And yeah, um, I really liked it. I, I think it's very, very the color and I don't know. Everything is very fall, like has a lot of, like a fall feeling, and even though we are here, we are on spring here. And don't get me wrong, I love summer. I love going to the beach. I love like uh, sunbathing and everything that's like summer, like from someone who grew up in a summer city, um, can love. But uh, fall is my favorite season, um, I, I really like it. Um, even though we don't get much of a fall, uh, in Santiago more, because in Rio it's like the leaves don't even change that much. So we have some, some changes of course, the temperature and stuff, but here in Santiago you can feel more and I, I really like it. And yeah, so. For whoever is on the northern hemisphere and I want to get ready for fall, I, I would recommend this pattern. And it's because it's worsted weight, it grows up in no time. Seriously, it's it's it grows up very very fast. And it's also the type of pattern that if you want to knit until you run out of yarn, you can make this ribbon. Um, bigger or smaller, depending on how much yarn you have left. Um, or you can just uh, work like one repeat less of the, of the cables. And even if you want, you can, how to say, uh, work the whole pattern in cable without garter, or just like a small stripe of cable and more garter. Um, the, the pattern includes like um, directions for it. So, so yeah, um, I hope you guys like it. 
Uh, and now the works in progress I have. Uh, I showed you guys this the last time and I just wanted to show you my small, small progress. You can see here, I think I moved this the last time I worked uh, on these socks. Um, so it was like half, half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch. Um, but yeah, Chris won't need this until next winter, so I'm taking my time needing it. I took it to the park the other day because I went to meet a friend who I haven't seen in like two years. Uh, she used to go to the same um, uh, knitting group um, that I used to go, uh, but then uh, the knitting group just like dissolved because of the the time it was like uh, it was on the morning Wednesday mornings and people couldn't go anymore so just it happens sometimes it just dissolves <laughs> uh, and we, we kept in touch and sometimes we would talk uh, a bit on Instagram or something um, but we haven't seen each other in like two years I think um, so we just went to the to the park uh, with another friend that was also from our knitting group and. Um, and I worked a little bit on, on these. So yeah, uh, they are still my, not still, uh, because since, I don't know, March, we have barely left the house. Uh, but yeah, they are, socks are always my portable projects. I think I mentioned this on the previous episode. So yeah, I still have a lot left. I, I, I don't know. Uh, I, I get the impression that with contrast toes and maybe the cuff, I, I could get away with just using one, even for Chris. And Chris doesn't have a small foot, but Chris is very skinny and his foot is also skinny, so I make him usually an M. So like a 64 stitches and I don't, I, I don't know if I uh, said this on the last episode, but I'm using, um, I have a free pattern called Flawless Socks and I'm using the recipe for it uh, and um, but I changed the decorative pattern for the vanilla latte uh, I think I did talk about this, right? Uh, pattern, so yeah so I still have a lot left and I know for the heel, the afterthought heel, I'm gonna need I think at least five grams, but yeah, Chris he likes his socks, um, his winter socks, to be quite high actually. So for now, I think this is must be like what five inches, yeah, maybe a bit more. So four, I don't know. Um, I, I can still get more. I, I can still work more a, a little bit and just but. Uh, and just work the afterthought here, but I'm gonna have quite some yarn left over. And I, I, I get very anxious with having yarn left over. <laughs> I, I feel like it's such a waste. Like they, they are so good, they are you know, so pretty, so expensive sometimes. These were, were kind of okay, the price, their price point, but and for the quality, I think they're quite okay. It was oh God, how, how much? Like three dollars, I think, each each fifty grams. So yeah, it was quite quite good. Uh, the price point, maybe maybe four dollars. I don't know. Yeah, like three thousand pesos. So, yeah, um, but yes, um, they are, I liked it and I'm gonna keep on knitting a little bit more, make it like quite long socks, like on here on the leg and then the, and here the after top heel. And I bought the other day also from, I went to the yarn store, my local yarn store, because this brand, they also have stores. Um, in like I think it's only in Chile. I don't know if they are in other South American countries, but uh, here they have 
uh, lots of, of stores. So they are brand and they have their own um, stores. Uh, and I think they're so cute. Like so sparkly. Uh, I, I think th these are the only speckled ones they have in this base. I don't know in the uh, in their other bases if they have more, but I got it and uh, I'm gonna make yeah, more socks. But if for Chris, I um, for me one fifty gram skein would be enough for sure. So I'm probably gonna not fifty. I usually uh, if I want them longer for my feet. Uh, I usually uh, need like 60 grams, I think. but still I could make a contrasting toe or something, but I'm gonna have some left off. So what I sometimes do, um, and I, I, I have noticed that um, for me it quite, yeah, each, uh, each skin of these are 210 meters, so that would be in yard 230, I think, yards or something like that. So I, I have noticed that a uh, hundred uh, grams uh, of sock weight yarn, I can get a pair of socks and um, I think, I don't know if you know, uh, I probably know because it's such a popular pattern. Um, Ripple, rip, ripple bralette from Jessie May. Um, so that's what I usually do. I, I need my, my uh, I need myself a pair of socks, and then with the yarn that's left over, I need uh, that bralette because the bralette for my size, I need a second size. Uh, it's like a hundred and fifty yards, I think. It's not that much. And it, I, I don't know, it's, I find it super comfortable, it's a super uh, well written pattern. Um, I'm gonna show it next time because I, I don't want to make this podcast super long. But so next time I'm gonna show you some of the, um, how do say, the, the combos I have of sock and bra, uh, ripple bralettes that I made. Uh, and it's just like, it, it uh, how to say, um, they not not add a, oh my god, and they are just the right um, uh, yardage for <laughs> for me. So a um, hundred gram skein. That's usually the um, the ah, I cannot talk today. It's usually the um, how ah, the, how they weight. Like usually they come in a hundred skein, a hundred gram skeins. Uh, like finger and weight yarn and sock yarn uh, and I can get a pair of socks for me on a small size I am uh... wow on Chile I think it's a 37 like I'm a European 37 uh, my feet mm -hmm. 36 37 depending on the shoe but and I can get uh, a pair of socks and a ripple bralette from 100 grams cane of yarn, sock yarn. So if you have, um, I don't know, uh, less than 200 yards of sock yarn hanging around, you should de definitely check out this uh, pattern. So, yeah. I think that's it uh, I had to show you guys today. I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, my Sambanit Knitting Podcast number two. And yeah, uh, if you want to see something in particular, if you want me to talk about some of my designs in particular, uh, just leave me a comment if you have any questions about anything I showed you today. Um, I'm also, I'm gonna leave it down on the notes, uh, all the information of everything I talked about and yeah, I don't know if I, I talked about this on the beginning but um, I'm gonna um, I'm slowly adding subtitles, English subtitles to my previous Spanish episodes so I will let you know when they are all done if you wanna go 
and watch them even though you don't speak Spanish. And on this one I'm gonna also add English subtitles, uh, English captions and Spanish and Portuguese subtitles. But it usually take me around like a day or something to do it after it uploads because you have to go through all oh, and verify and check if like punctuation and if like the word you're saying like the because YouTube translates it not translates it but how do you say uh, writes down automatically the captions but you have to verify because sometimes it like they you say something and then they understand something completely different um, but yeah uh, so yeah that's it um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it and if you did please uh, subscribe, uh, leave me a comment and, or a like or something <laughs> and that's it. I would love to hear more from you too and yeah, hope to see you soon. Bye bye!